Vice Chair Maloney, uh, Chairman Lee, members of the committee, thank you for the privilege of being here today uh, to discuss uh, this important research area and the, the policy implications of it. Uh, we are all by now quite familiar with the characterization of uh, income inequality and its evolution over the past four decades, uh, a characterization that includes the share going to the top 1% rising from roughly 10 to 20%, and uh, incomes for those in the bottom half of the distribution remaining essentially flat. So as uh, someone who is a consumer of this research literature as much as anyone, it's disconcerting to read recent research um, uh, by Jerry Otten and, and David Splinter that re-examines these, these patterns and finds, in fact, uh, at the top, the rise was quite modest, perhaps 2%, and that in the bottom 50%, the income increased by about a third over that period. And that's a, a very different picture of the level and evolution of inequality in the United States. It's, it's clear there is no consensus and if you dig into this, it turns out that the results that you get are incredibly sensitive to the kinds of things that neither you nor I would know how to make a decision on. Uh, what is going to be the basic unit of observation? Are we going to look at households? Or are we going to look at tax filing units? Um, what is going to be the definition of income? What will be in it? Will we try to scale to get all, all national income or not? Um, how do we impute the, the things that we don't actually directly observe? And it's quite striking how sensitive the results are to different choices of the measure of inflation uh, over that time period. It makes a big difference for the, for the results. And so uh, I think it's fair to say at this point there, there is no real consensus about the level or evolution of income inequality and that this, this is an ongoing and active area of research that hopefully uh, some agreement will be reached by, by the various researchers. It does, for me at least, raise the question of how we want to think about the policy implications of the research. If we really don't know where we are, uh, it's, it's hard to figure out exactly what the policy design would be. And on top of that, um, it's not obvious what the goal is. What is the right level of inequality? And how would you actually identify it and institute policies to get to it? Surely we're not trying to get to zero, where everyone gets exactly the same thing. So that we have to stop somewhere in between. And I have yet to see anyone articulate a stopping point in a way for us to think about the objectives of this, uh, of this policy. And so if you don't know where you're starting and you don't know where you're going, it's not much of a, a situation where you'd want to take aggressive policy action. Um, the final thing I'd emphasize that comes out quite clearly in this is while there's uh, casual talk about the top 1% or the, mid, the middle income or, or the lower uh, income as if they were monolithic entities, there's a huge amount of movement in and out of those. Um, in research that Jerry Otten did, you find that something between 37 and 47 percent of those people in the one percent are gone a year later. So being a one percenter might be a one-time lifetime event. You sell a business, you're a one percenter, you weren't before, you never will be again. And how we think about policies toward any part of that income distribution, we should think hard about whether people are going to be there for any sustained period of time. It makes a difference in, in, the, in the policy design. So um, when I, I look at this literature and I recognize the, the sort of um, deep caring that's always been true in the United States about inequality, it, it leads me to the modest suggestion that perhaps the right thing to do until the research is settled is to focus on the piece of inequality about which we all agree, the lower tail. Those people who are poor in America have been poor, may, may remain poor. There, I think, is consensus that we ought to do something about that wherever possible and spend a little less time fighting about policies toward the rich and spend a lot more time thinking about strategies to reduce the level of poverty in the United States uh, on a permanent basis. Thank you and look forward to your questions.